Hi. I mentioned not long ago that I I started to worry that I that I only punch down. I only respond to idiots. Um, so I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to do a response to someone I like. Someone who's probably smarter than me. And I'm not even going to be an asshole. I kind of just want to jam with her. When I was younger, I really could not understand why people made a big deal of gender at all. Hi, bye. Thanks for all the times you won the internet by reverse engineering mathematics, sometimes using music and cartoons. I'm Mike. I win the internet by reverse engineering gender, sometimes using music and cartoons. Greetings, fellow Harbinger. Now, there are a lot of people out there who will tell you they are the ones reverse engineering gender. But if you pay close attention, Vi, you will notice few to zero of those people took engineering degrees. Admittedly, I didn't take an engineering degree, but at least I didn't take a gender studies degree. Why would anyone ever feel the need to point out that they were a man or a woman? I thought it silly and attention-seeking when anyone would call attention to their gender in any way. You're a doer, not a beer, Vi. Oh, you're, you're bloody good at being, but it's by virtue of you being so good at doing, if you see what I mean. That's why you don't notice gender, because gender is all about identity, about being. It's nothing to do with doing. You see the world in, in, in its universal language. Mathematics. What does it matter what the number one looks like or how it identifies itself? It could be a W, it could be a fish, it could be the tactile sensation of a warm pine cone. It could be a mysterious legendary concept called WOW. It matters not. What matters is what the number does to our calculations. And as you say, a person's gender matters not, except in medical situations. What matters is what that person does. You can be a paedophile all day, every day. Just don't fuck any kids. <laughs> and you can be a polyamorous, non-binary pansexual. Just don't use it as an excuse to censor people. And don't fuck any kids. Profile names of the form thing I like plus gendered identifier caused an instant dislike to well up in me. Oh. So you're not quite neutral then. Sometimes gendered nouns are necessarily descriptive, and sometimes they're just for the flowery sake of poetry. An instant dislike to any gendered noun is not neutral. In fact, I think the term for that is sex negative. Oh yeah, subcategory of. I assumed that gender mattered as little to other people as it did to me. Well, you've sort of just demonstrated that it very much does matter to you, insofar as you don't like it. If gender were a YouTube video, not only did you click on it and watch it, you also disliked it. Instantly. And thus, if they made a fuss about, for example, being misgendered, it was a purely dramatic show made in bad faith. More on that later. But uh, regarding the image there, Vi, I... For one, do not take an instant dislike to the phrase song dude. To be honest, I don't even hear it as a gendered term. I call women dude all the time and women call each other dude all the time. In my generation and in my neck of the woods anyway, dude is kind of a gender neutral term. But you, Vi, take an instant dislike to that phrase because you hear it as gendered. Uh, you tried to tell us that gender doesn't matter to you, but you just revealed that it very much does. It's a negative feeling that you pretend you're not having. It's quite normal, though, don't worry. Most people have some kind of mental block when it comes to gender. I'll try and walk you through it as we go along. Incidentally, the word man and the word girl both used to be gender neutral. They no longer are, and <laughs> we have those very same gendered mental blocks to thank for it. <laughs> That's another story. Or is it? This made quite a puzzle out of the fact that apparently 
Some people considered their gender to be so strongly a part of their identity that if it just so happened that they had been assigned the wrong one at birth, they'd go through all the trouble to transition. Ah, now, to me, there's no such thing as the wrong gender. And there's no such thing as the wrong ethnicity. There are, you know, wrong tasks for certain people in certain situations, and there are wrong SP factors for certain skin tones. But as far as I'm concerned, if you're born with it, it is right. Because I am not an identity politician. As far as I can ascertain, meritocracy is the only functioning form of egalitarianism, at least the only one with a track record. There are people who genuinely believe in equality. And you can spot them because they judge all people by their deeds and only by their deeds. Because they say, because they see the same inherent value in all humans, human identities do not concern them. But when a person becomes preoccupied with identity politics, it is because, directly because, they do not believe in equality. How else could they even conceive of the very idea of a wrong gender? I believed that humans are social animals who tend to take the path of least resistant, both physically and culturally. Arguably, arguably. Uh, but for some people, psychological resistance is a greater force than physical resistance. The human mind is a very strange thing. And you may have noticed transgenderism is something that didn't really take place until quite recently, and doesn't, still doesn't often take place among poor people. To be precise, busy people. To a busy person, the path of least resistance is that which saves the most time and motion. But when people aren't busy, they get bored. Sometimes profoundly bored. And when you're profoundly bored, you're not interested in saving time and motion, you're just trying to not go insane. In which case, the path of least resistance is the path of most resistance. It's a state of mind Samuel Beckett referred to as aporia, or the pathless path. It's sort of a mental landscape in which one would rather do imaginary cartwheels around a Mobius strip forever than spend a second conserving one's energy. I think it's one of those things that happens in you know cats, dogs, dolphins and chimps. Animals who play even long into adulthood. A lot of us like role play, but some of us sometimes will kind of overplay it. So if someone does something that's really difficult, there has to be a good reason for it. Not necessarily, I'm afraid. As we just confirmed, people take the path of least resistance. There's always a reason, but it's not always a good reason. Sometimes people go insane. And being trans sounded like a lot of effort. Hard to justify if gender doesn't really matter at all. These people think differently from you. Right, not completely differently, but still very differently. You like to tell yourself gender doesn't exist. Whereas trans people think gender very much does exist, even to the point of being judged right or wrong. It's possible, based on what you said earlier, that you do, in fact, judge all gender as wrong. <laughs> but you hide it under the homely but elaborate Persian rug of I don't see gender. If you'll pardon the antiquated gendered wording, Ms. Hart, it sounds rather like the lady doth protest too much. And it was too long. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. But you're about to say your pivotal sentence. Bye. Not until I was in college. Now, I know where you're coming from. For most people, going to college is something of a culture shock. It's rather humbling to be suddenly surrounded by such a diverse metropolitan range of people. And with every new person, you think, well, <laughs> they must be worshipped as a deity in their village. Well, they should be. These people are amazing and awesome. And then by the end of the third year, you've come to understand that most of them are pretentious twats. By that, I mean they like to pretend. Twats. That any actual trans voices made it across my radar. To remind you, Vi, an actual trans is a person who believes in wrong genders. And you didn't need to go to college to expand to that particular horizon, because you yourself, Vi, believe all genders are wrong. 
you are what might be called a pan transsexual. So I would say to you, if there is any voice you should be listening to with regard to this subject, it is your own. It's a very nice voice, by the way. Most popular YouTubers have very nice voices. It is by no means a coincidence. And I realize that this is not just a theoretical curiosity from far away, but something that people actually do. No, no. No, 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 no. It's, now, this is why I respond to this video fight. You know how I said at the beginning how you're so good at doing things that you're automatically good at being? That is how it works. It doesn't work the other way around. Identifying as something does not count as accomplishing something. I mean, changing from red to green accomplishes something, but changing from red to red and saying, I'm not red, I'm green, accomplishes nothing. <laughs> because no change has taken place except in a semiotic abstraction outside of the model it's signifying. Of course, because therein perhaps lies the exception. If altering your identity within that semiotic abstraction will bring greater returns in the real world, then that action could be said to accomplish those returns. If you live in a society in which group A is treated better than group B, then if you're B and you change to A, then people will treat you better, and you accomplished that better treatment by changing your identity. But I would say the, uh, the accomplishments in that scenario are not yours, but those of the people treating you better. And I don't think we should seek salvation through the accomplishments of others. I believe in doing it yourself. Real people go through all this trouble, and for what? Gender? This would be a good time to give you the far side of the story. This is where it starts to get head fucky. You ready? Right. When someone sees inherent value in white people, but they do not see inherent value in coloured people, we call that person a racist. And when someone sees inherent value in straight people, but they do not see inherent value in gay people, we call that person a homophobe or something. But notably, most homophobes do not care that Freddie Mercury was gay. And most racists do not care that Usain Bolt is black. Why? Because of their deeds. Even the most hardline bigot will forgive an individual of their target group if that individual's deeds are spectacular enough. When a person sees no inherent value in white people, but they see inherent value in every other race, what do we call that person? It's racist again. <laughs> There's no such thing as reverse racism. It's just another flavor of racism. Such people are often referred to as social justice warriors. But most of them don't have a name for themselves because as far as they're concerned, hating white people is normal. So normal that it's not considered hate. Fortunately, these kinds of people are still quite rare, except in universities. Because as we know, university is the opposite of diversity! Now, right, here comes the really tricky bit. When a person sees inherent value in women, but they see no inherent value in men, what do we call that person? Most people don't have a word for it. Right. Most people. The, the, the correct answer, as you may have guessed, is sexist. Or misandrist, if the opposite scenario is defined as misogyny. But like I say, to most people, that scenario does not have a name. It is considered normal. It has been considered normal for a very long time. To value women for simply being women, but to value men only if their deeds match up. In fact, it's not just normal, is it, Vi? We've breezed right past normal. Nowadays, the fact that we value women automatically, but make men earn their value, is, dis is considered discrimination against women. <laughs> We've swung right over into La La Land, and the pendulum is still swooping. We treat women like the aristocracy and men like slaves, and yet we're convinced as a society that we're doing the opposite and it's because we left some extremely crazy people in charge of our universities vi and they have spread a lot of unbelievably stupid and fucked up ideas into the last few generations of rich kids and now they want the world upside down and to make it ever more upside downer 
As far as our learning institutions and our broadcasting outlets are concerned, you should feel guilty for being white. You should feel guilty for being male. This goes on for several generations and then we look around us and see a lot of men who think they're women and a lot of white women who think they are magical forest fictions with dissociative identity disorder. And we go, meh, that must be normal. <laughs> it's just what people do when they're left to their own devices. But it's not normal, is it? Vi? It's exactly what you would expect to happen if you normalized and institutionalized white male guilt or any kind of racial gendered guilt. If you tell people they should feel guilty because a part of their identity they can't change, then you are going to severely warp their minds, sometimes to the point where they believe they could change the identity they were born with. Even to the point where they become obsessed with identity politics. See, I think you figured this out, Vi, in the back of your mind, and that's why you told yourself you don't see gender. Because it's your way of dealing with the guilt you're supposed to feel as a white person and the guilt you're not supposed to feel as a woman. The rational part of your brain said, why should I feel any less guilty than a man? But then, Vi, you went to college, where presumably you met quite a lot of people who answered that question. Men should feel guilty and women should feel victimised because we all say so! And we have libraries of lies to back us up. As you said, people take the path of least resistance. Termites take the path of least resistance when they're building the same segregational empire they've been building for centuries. <laughs> like the five monkeys experiment. If you put five monkeys in a cage with a banana hanging from the ceiling and a small staircase leading up to where the banana's hanging, and if any monkey tries to grab the banana, you fire a jet of water into the cage, soaking all five monkeys and you know, aggravating them severely, then all five monkeys will eventually learn this sequence of events. And if any monkey starts climbing the staircase, the other four monkeys will start wailing on that monkey because they know they're not going to get a banana and they don't want to get soaked again. If you remove one of those five monkeys and replace it with a new monkey, that monkey will climb the staircase not knowing what's going on and they get wailed on by the other monkeys. And that monkey will learn that wailing on monkeys for climbing staircases is what we do here because reasons. So if you gradually, like one at a time, get to replacing all five monkeys with new monkeys in this way, <laughs> the same process will occur forever and all five monkeys will beat each other down if they try to climb the staircase, even though none of them know what happens if you grab the banana and none of them have ever been soaked. It's, like, it's a it's sort of Skinner box, but one that only works in highly social species. Social species have that double-edged sword of being able to find a way to reinforce whatever rules the environment lays down without ever understanding the nature or origin of those rules. And they will never snap out of it without a severe change to the environment, you know, like famine or something. And we live in an exceptionally stable, uh, resource-rich, unpredated environment in which we've spent generations telling people white is bad, male is bad, white is bad, male is bad, and if anyone says, fuck that, I'm white and male and I'm proud of it, they get wailed on! Usually by other white males. Bear in mind, the only bad guy in the five monkeys scenario is whichever sick fuck set up the experiment. The only conclusion that fit the facts was that indeed gender is a thing. Maybe it's culturally created, or maybe it's biological, or maybe it's something else, I don't know, but it's definitely real. Biological identity is definitely real. Yes, however you may feel about gendered pronouns and identity politics, you cannot deny the existence of chromosomes. Well, you, you, you can, I suppose, but I don't think you're going to, Vi. See, it doesn't matter what you wear or how you speak, it doesn't even matter what's between your legs. Either you have XY or you have XX. There is no spectrum there. It is a hard binary. It is objective medical information that the doctor needs to know. See, I find that's generally a good acid test. You, you can say you don't believe in gender, but if you go to the doctor, then the doctor tells you, oh, your father has a genetic disease, but it's patrilineal, so it doesn't pass to females. Your reaction, Vi, is probably going to be, oh, that's a relief. I'm female. 
Oh, that cultural creation fight, that's not a thing. The headmates, the other kins, the transsexuals, that genuinely is a spectrum of infinite points that adds up to nothing of consequence. But some people have taken that model and applied it to biology. They like to pretend chromosomes don't exist. In much the same way creationists like to pretend evolution doesn't exist. They need to think of themselves as sacred beyond reason. To them, it is the path of least resistance. And if it's real when trans folk do it, maybe it's even real when cis folk do it. Do what, Vi? Cis isn't an action. Neither is trans. I mean, the medical operation is an action. The mindset is not. Cis folk are those who say, I am what I am. Trans folk are those who say, I am not what I am. It's like the, it's like the non-religious are those who say, I am a primate, and the religious are those who say, I am made in God's image. Now, you know, I'm, I'm honestly not trying to piss off the trans people here. I understand most of you are just doing as you please with your own minds and your own bodies, and that's fine. Just don't leave other people with the impression that their identity is wrong when they felt just fine in their own skin before they started talking to you. See, like any other grouping, the trans community does contain some militant assholes who infect other people's minds with demonstrably batshit ideas and your mind vi is far too valuable to lose especially to the most absurdly stupid people who have ever existed it, it is getting absurdly stupid vi trans ableism is a thing now never mind trans racialism which is a thing trans ableism is a thing a guy had his arm ripped off because he, feel, he feels like an amputee trapped in an able body. True story. And he's like, oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> All the other stuff about it. No, I'm not a white male human. I'm a protosexual pink dolphin. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. But I feel like an amputee. No, that's ridiculous. My point is, it all started in a ridiculous place. Identity politics is a ridiculous place. Because by its very nature, it achieves nothing except orientating the achievements of others. And I'm of the opinion that people should orient around their own achievements. In understanding that gender identity is a real thing, I also understood that I don't have it. And I don't identify as being agender or bigender or any other number of genderqueer identities either. I simply don't identify. Fight. I'm like 99% sure your chromosomes read XX. I don't think you're even sure. That is a gender identity. It's how your genome works. If, you, if you're talking about the gender you have in your head, then no, you don't have that because it actually isn't real. Any more than your political leanings are real. They're just in your head. Some people think it is real because they are profoundly bored. Some people dogmatically insist it's real because they don't believe in equality and they want a way to control people without making any effort. That is the core of what identity politics is about. The greatest control with the least effort. The path of least resistance. I have all the privilege of being fine with keeping the default I was born with, as well as the privilege- uh, The word privilege is a red flag, Vi. <laughs> if you say problematic, I'm gonna fucking shoot myself that when people use a supposedly wrong pronoun, they email me or write an article about my work, I don't feel misgendered. Maybe you do. Maybe you have these feelings all the time, you just don't pay attention to them because you don't think you're entitled to use your feelings as an excuse to bully people. It's just you're emotionally healthy for the most part. I get the feeling you've met some people who do emotionally bully others in this way. This is a different kind of bully, Vi. They are very, very good at it. Like, beating someone for their lunch money is caveman shit to these people. These are the people who employ others to forcibly collect everyone's lunch money. Although I might feel tired of sexist assumptions. Me too. Tired is a perfectly healthy reaction. Militant emotional terrorism, not so healthy. Oh, I, I made a sexist assumption just now that you have double X chromosomes, and I'm sorry if that made you feel tired, <laughs> but I'm glad it didn't get me banned for life or something. <laughs> Long story. 
I'm fine with other people deciding that I'm a cisgendered female, or a gender-free, genderqueer, or whatever else makes them happy. It all feels like a linguistic game to me. Again, doctors, Vi. It, it doesn't make them happy to call you a female. It's not a linguistic game. They need to know this information in case they need to save your life. I could jump in and start playing, but that doesn't seem right when I know that for many other people it's not a game at all. Yeah, for biologists and geneticists and medical professionals, it is not a game. But for identity politicians, it is very much a game. A large, elaborate, massive multiplayer empire building game in which identities are treated with the kind of reverence that should only be reserved for deeds and merits. It's like a video game in which all you do is change your decals. I feel like the more I learn about gender, the less I understand it. Then you've been talking to the wrong people, as I suspected. But that's okay, because the more I learn about gender, the happier and more thoughtful and hopefully better I become. <laughs> yeah, that's how they operate, by telling themselves that. This is how they justify spending thousands on a gender studies course and learning nothing but bullshit. My condescending teenager attitude was correct. Came from a false belief that other people are basically like me. Other people are basically like you, Vi. The default position is not to differentially judge people on gender, and you were right there. But then you met people who judge everyone on their gender, who only care about labels, and they convinced you that your inner vision is false. Listen to your inner condescending teenager. She hates herself for meritocratic reasons of self-improvement. And that's why she's so sharp. That's why she's so lovable. Don't let these people destroy what made your mind beautiful. I didn't care. Therefore, others don't really care. Therefore, if they act like they care, then it's just an act for attention or drama or because they're bored. But I, I did this point by point. I swear I didn't know if you were going to confirm everything I'm saying. But this is it. This is your inner vision speaking, and it's bang on the fucking money. Because I know that if I were to act like that, it would be for those reasons. I was suspicious of people who made statements like, I am a woman. Because if I were to say that, it wouldn't be genuine. It would feel weird and false. Exactly, because being a woman is not what makes you awesome. You would be amazed how many women cannot and will not grasp that notion. <laughs> Like I said, we've spent centuries automatically ascribing inherent value to women that we do not automatically ascribe to men. As a result, we have millions of women who think they're awesome just because they're women. And as a result, they feel no drive to actually do anything awesome. When you tell men they need to do something before we'll consider them awesome, you incentivize them to work hard in ways you never incentivize women. And that's why men operate most of the hardest most high-paying jobs because we treat them like slaves therefore anyone who says it must have some alternate motive listen to your teenager Vi. she's right the same fallacy made me think that since i thought beer tasted terrible this is before i lived in belgium and learned what beer is everyone thinks beer tastes terrible therefore if they say they like it they're just pretending to be cool just like i'd be doing Beer does taste terrible. It's made of yeast. It's made of infection. <laughs> if, if beer tasted like Marmite, we would still drink it. Because it gets you drunk. And it nourishes you, and it's very easy to make. We figured it out thousands of years ago, and we've been acquiring the taste ever since. Come to think of it, beer does taste like Marmite. Imagine Marmite as a drink. It's fucking beer! <laughs> you know, just like a handful of coffee beans is a very bitter and unenjoyable experience all around, but if you can extract it into a drink, it's still quite bitter, but it's a taste you can acquire if necessary. Beer does taste instinctively terrible. And coffee does taste instinctively terrible, because to the human palate, bitter is an instinctively bad taste. You might even call it an objectively bad taste, given that the objective of eating is to stay alive, and poisonous things are usually bitter. There are given hardwirings to the human body, Vi. 
I must say, for someone so shit hot at maths, you've shown a rather squirmy disregard for the rudimentaries of chemistry and biology. See, this is what those identity politicians will do to you. They peel away all the hard sciences until you're left with nothing but social science. Which is not a science. It's essentially all bullshit. And if they say they like a piece of music that I think is pretentious, of course they secretly agree it's terrible, but are just being pretentious themselves. That, on the other hand, is indeed entirely subjective. One's inner teenager can tend to be a bit of a brat when it comes to musical tastes. They're not always right, you know, nothing's black and white. And if I have a bias that I pretend to be politically correct about... Such as instantly disliking gender. And pretending that means it doesn't matter to you. Everyone secretly agrees with me, but is also just pretending to be politically correct. No, I think a lot of people do see gender, and they do see race. They just don't think about it or bring it up unless it, unless it becomes an anecdotal point of interest or something. And why can't we all just admit, as a culture, the truth about these people and their music and their beer that everybody secretly knows, just like I do? Can do. Hey everybody, beer tastes like shit, but you drink it anyway. And a lot of music sounds like shit, but you like it anyway. People are strange. <laughs> when you're a stranger. Faces look ugly when you're alone. <laughs> Women seem wicked <laughs> when you're unwanted. Streets are uneven when you're down. It turns out people are truly different from each other, and thankfully not every human secretly harbors all the same inner feelings, same tastes, same resentments, same biases as my idiot teenage self. <laughs> A lot of them have much worse shit going on up there. And they don't have the self-awareness to reassess it like you do. Which is a shame, because you're right, and they're wrong. I managed to finally realize that when other people say, I am a woman, they actually mean something by it, in a way I never will. Good! That means you're still free! Free to do! Rather than bog everyone down with being. I wish I grew up knowing any of this were a thing. I probably would have been better to others as well as to myself. I highly doubt that. Ascribing an, an unchanging and hierarchical self-worth to your born identity is something the aristocracy does. The aristocracy are not well known for being nice. So the transgender community taught me a lot, and I'm thankful for this. Alright, you've been successfully proselytized to. That's fine, I'm perfectly in favour of proselytizing as long as you're talking to people who are willing to listen. And I hope more trans and genderqueer voices from more different backgrounds will have their voices heard, even where people are not looking for them. Oh. <laughs> so will there be any missionary work in your future? Are you planning to go to Uganda to spread this helpful message of peace? Dear AIDS-ridden, war-torn friends, hear ye, hear ye, it is very important that you judge people on their race, gender, and sexual orientation, because some of them are wrong! That is all! For their sake, as well as for teenagers like who I was, and anyone else trapped in the uncaring meat of their head. Your head is not uncaring meat! Why, it never has been! The human brain is easily the most caring object in the known universe, especially yours, Vi! Your brain is amazing! Please stop listening to these people! Who is finally being forced to imagine... What? Who is finally being forced to imagine... Who is finally being forced to imagine... What were you doing before? Before you were being forced to imagine? I... You were imagining voluntarily. On your own terms. That maybe the world is truly different from the stupid, spiteful place they imagined in their own image. Do you, do you see why I felt the need to respond to this? And in such detail? This is the sound of an intellectual giant being tied down and micro-fucked by ghoulish flatworms from another dimension. By the stupid spiteful place you imagine in your own image is a beautiful entertaining and informative world which almost a hundred thousand people adore 
So if a handful of dead-eyed cultists tell you, oh, no, you're incredibly unhappy and you just didn't realise it, don't listen to them, Vi. Put the book down, spin on your heels and stroll out and never go back to the Scientology store again, okay? You're not desperately unhappy like these people say you are. I mean, by the sounds of things, you had a minor issue with gender, but that's normal. All these people do is take that and turn it into a major issue with gender. A global, intersectional, progressive stack of various sized measuring cylinders of victim cred. The only end game of which is the complete excision of anyone's actions, accomplishments and consequences. And the reduction of every human on Earth to a powerless node on Big Brother's radar. Oh, and the extermination of white cisgendered straight men. There is no one on Earth who is black enough, queer enough, and disabled enough to make it to the top of the progressive stack. But it just so happens there's a huge demographic of innocent humans who rank in dead last. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how that pans out. Anyway, bye. I just wanted to tell you, never change. But since I appear to have missed the boat there... All I will say to you is, see if you can go back to before this change, <laughs> then never change. Because you have not changed from unhappy to happy. You've just changed from brain vibrant to slightly brain washed. And your brain should never be washed at all. Aye. Your brain is filthy and cluttered and teeming with colonies of weird alien life, and I for one adore it. I want to curl up and fall asleep in your brain and wake up in the filth. But while I'm in there, Vi, I don't want to get soaked by a jet stream while I'm reaching for the banana. Do you get me? Goodbye. And fuck pie.